The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas at VMware Explorer 2024. Dan, we've been having some great conversations, private cloud, private AI. You know, this cloud conversation has been a great one going on 15 years. Yeah, it's a, it's a teenager now, Pat. And I it think uh, depending on the exact first workloads that we consider, it's somewhere between 15, almost <laughs> nearing 20. It can't drink, but uh, soon it'll be able to vote. And uh, it is moving really, really quickly. And yes, we are sort of seeing the conversation ebb yeah. quickly in the direction of private as we are kind of helping companies figure out how to make that data work and how to do it in a way that's scalable and cost controlled. And then of course, AI has only made all of this stuff way more important for ITDMs, CIOs, and of course companies that are trying to technically move but also do it really intelligently. Yeah, I'm always struck, uh, you know, the, the 15 year old cranky teenager uh, called the cloud has been going on for so long, <laughs> yet about 80% of the data uh, is still on-prem. There's a lot of reasons for that. And, you know, the public cloud has seen just immense popularity uh, because it is the easy, it was the easy button initially for developers. And there was a lot of tops down. But what happened is people are standing back, it's like, gosh, I'm spending a lot on this, and there are on-prem stacks, like we're gonna get to, like VCF, yeah. that are enabling that experience uh, on-prem. And I can't think of a better person to have this conversation than uh, Paul Turner. Welcome to the 6.5. Hey, thank you so much, and glad to be here. Ah. Yeah, it is. And, and, and Paul, you heard our, our preamble a bit. And Pat, of course, you can't forget a lot of the original sort of operating model behind cloud was, was CapEx and OpEx. It was just about how to consume and how to make it very, very digestible yes. and easy. And so now it's really about the it's access to the instances and computers, access to the, the storage, the network, access to the advanced services that you that are required. And new questions are arising. Is right. it important if it's the public cloud or if it's just a... IT stack by the way that looks and feels and operates like a cloud, but it's on your prem. I mean, and so we're there, but uh, you know, it's been a big year, Paul, and you've been out and about on the road with your customers. You're leading on this VCF effort here. Kind of what are your customers saying? I guess Pat and I are, ram are rambling about it, but what are your customers telling you? <laughs> well, I, I actually love the description that you gave of, of cloud being the cranky teenager. Um, but it's, it's teenagers get expensive, as we all know <laughs> as well. And, and I think, you, you know, what we have seen and over the last few years is we've been doing TCO analysis for customers in terms of how can they implement on the cloud, you know, a native public cloud versus on-prem. And we find that it's 40% cheaper for customers to implement in their data center once they've got a level of scale, right? It's a much, much more efficient environment. But cloud also taught us something. Cloud taught us about agility and right. agility matters and it's application agility and deployment. So what you also see inside in customers is many of them have virtualized their data center. You know, and they virtualize, well, virtualize at least their compute platform. They get great efficiency off it. They're doing that mostly right. with VMware but they're not, they've got kind of independent kind of pillars and stacks of product, silos of product that really they haven't integrated into a cloud platform. And that's the second thing that we're seeing is best in class people who've actually deployed full cloud platform are getting immense benefits from that platform. You know, 61% faster deployment. Uh, and that's a stat from IDC, uh, latest report that we actually saw from IDC and 34% lower infrastructure costs. So even those customers out there that have virtualized, too many of them haven't actually moved to kind of really virtualizing their full data center and doing a cloud platform for their data center because doing that will lower their infrastructure costs and will actually increase their agility. So, so those are kind of the two big factors. The third factor that is very conscious in most IT organizations is security confidence in compliance of your environment, protection from ransomware threats. So those are kind of the three trends. Cloud is not cheaper. Uh, security is paramount. And how do we make it much more operationally efficient for existing customers to actually run a full private cloud? Because many of them haven't done that. And doing it will have great savings. So VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation is essentially, uh, you've worked many years to bring the benefits of the public cloud uh, on-prem. and. Uh, 
you know, Dan and I got pre-briefed as analysts uh, on VCF9. Um, big announcement today at the show, VCF9. But for those who may not have heard about it, maybe the, the people tuning into this video right now, what are some of the highlights uh, of that? So, so yeah, actually, really great to get it out today, right? We've got this this launch. It was very exciting. What are getting it out? Is it is it is it GA? Is it the announcement? Is it? It's what, the announcement. It's okay. the announcement. We're still finishing the development work, so it's still in progress in terms of development. But it it's it's a it's a kind of new. It's a full platform for your cloud environment. You know, it's it breaks down those silos that you have inside in your infrastructure because if you've got Independent. If you're independently managing your compute, your storage, your networking, uh, just think about those common IaaS stack components. You can't deliver on the agility that you want from a private cloud, right? You can't deliver the speed of application delivery and deployment because to do that, everything has to be software defined. You really have to do it. So, so VCF nine is the next generation of our VCF product. We, we've a version five point two out there at the moment, but this is where we have made changes. We integrated all of our teams. We had silos of networking, compute, storage. We brought them together. We've integrated those teams. It gives you a single operations platform for root cause analysis and diagnostics for administrators to be able to find out what's going wrong in the platform, whether it's storage, networking, compute. If you can't find the issue there, automatically Skyline is integrated into it. So nice. Skyline is doing root cause analysis based on commonly found issues. And then you can do auto uh, uh, logging so it'll automatically correlate and collect any necessary logs so we can find your issue faster if it is a fix that we need to provide. So from an admin point of view, fleet management built into it for administrators, manage large scale environments and be able to do it through single automated API kind of surface or through interfaces and UI interfaces. So a lot in there to make the life of the virtual infrastructure administrator who's now gonna manage the entire data center to make them a cloud administrator uh, for that entire cloud. And the second big piece to it is, of course, applications, because we care about how do we deliver applications to you faster? And we're not just talking about any applications, we're talking about you can have your traditional VM-based applications, we've got full native Kubernetes applications built into it, and that Kubernetes has a built-in load balancer, a monitoring service, a backup a registry service, all of the services you need to actually run containerized applications that you may want to run, VM-based applications, private AI-based applications, all available through a very easy to consume, uh, effectively marketplace service uh, that you have available for customers. So two big things that we focus on, Third area is, again, I mentioned security. That's a third area that we look at in terms of how do we build this as the most confidential, trusted compute platform you can run on. Right. And beyond what's, you know, built, baked right in, and of course, you know, part of the whole narrative is about these advanced services, Paul, doing more than, you know, what can you build on top with, right. with VCF? Um, and in your, your general session, by the way, nice job. Thank you. That. Um, you know, you, you talked about this robust sort of set of offerings, advanced services. Talk a little bit about what they are and how they work with VCF and, uh, you know, the benefit they're going to provide to customer, customers. Yeah, so, so think about VCF. You've got your base kind of platform in there. It provides you a full automated runtime. It gives your admins. They're all happy. <laughs> they can scale their operations much more. Are admins can, ever happy? No, oh, they'll be super happy with all right. because okay. they'll be able to do just much more. And the problem they they struggle with is they don't have enough people to run the infrastructure and it costs and they're being told do more with less. Well, you can do more with less with VCF9. Yeah. And that's the key thing is, is fleet management. But let's get back to the advanced services that you mentioned. <laughs> it, you got a base platform. There's a lot of value add pieces that you can actually deliver to customers uh, that are super beneficial. And I'll just touch on a few of them. You can take like our private AI. How can you go anywhere at the moment without thinking generative AI solutions? How can I bring them into my data center, bring them into my IT? Because my data is trusted, secure, private data that I want to manage. So why can't I bring analytics to that? So, so that's one of our add-on uh, services, advanced services area. And we've enhanced it with an updated model store, GPU reservations, right. uh, it tied into it the NIM blueprints that are there from NVIDIA. So yeah. all of that, like a better platform. 
But we've got a disaster recovery uh, add-on service that does full ransomware protection and recovery. But even if you got infected, you can actually get and roll back to actually a secure and safe state. Advanced security built into it so that you can look at network monitoring and services so that you look for any escapes inside in your network. Because that's where the, usually the attacks come from for ransomware is they do side channel attacks. Uh, but if you protect your network, You've done that really well. So advanced services, we've data services. So I'm not sure if people are aware, but we've data services that include MySQL, RabbitMQ, Postgres, Valkey, which is basically a key value store, all available in our data services. Um, and I could go on. We've got our Tanzu developer services. All of these are extended catalog services that actually make you build a better cloud. And it's a better cloud, you know, bringing extra protection into the cloud, bringing extra load balancing and application level load balancing that you may need into the cloud. So bringing that extended set of services, uh, it's, it's not a full PaaS layer, right. but what it enables is customers to build their own PaaS layer and services. It's the next layer of services beyond a base IaaS stack that completes the offering, so that on top of that, you can as an IT org decide to deploy whatever application services you want. And we give you the flexibility to build those applications, build those blueprints, deploy them, it's easy. As analysts, I really appreciate you uh, calling out the IaaS and, and we're getting close to PaaS services yeah. and customers can create their own because it's the way us analysts think. We always have to put something in a stovepipe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, unlike enterprise SaaS, you can't just pull a trigger and everything just rolls over. Uh, on day one. So what should customers be doing today to get prepared for VCF9? And maybe if you can talk about maybe the type of customer, you know, hey, we, they're here and to get ready for VCF9, they should, should, uh, they should do these things. Yeah, well, I think to, to start with, we've made it already quite easy for them. Uh, VCF uh, 5.2 is the release that we actually just did in July. Right. It's fully upgradable to VCF9. Not going to be difficult at all for customers. So, so very oh, so easy. So this is as easy as enterprise SaaS. This is as easy as okay. Enterprise SaaS. Okay, okay. I just I need but, to eat my words there. But I, but I think I think more importantly, that means you know, and we brought in one key feature. I think that I'd, I'd like to emphasize in VCF 5.2, we brought in uh, what we call brownfield, which sounds terrible, <laughs> but um, basically it's it's import of existing environments, existing vSphere, vSAN environments can actually just be directly imported, okay. and now suddenly you've got all the fleet management of VCF and fully upgradable to version nine. So I would say, you know, don't worry too much. You can actually deploy today and upgrade today. But the other thing that, you know, you've got to look at these silos of IT that you kind of have in many enterprises. You may not have done your operations as perfectly as you would have liked. There's probably optimization you can do on capacity planning right. and forecasting. So for that, uh, we, we really recommend that people do a, uh, a, what we call a cloud maturity assessment. Okay. And in fact, at the show this week, we're actually doing cloud maturity assessments for customers. Okay. Uh, they're, they're one hour where you get a full kind of assessment report, it's individualized, and it gives you that kind of first indicator of like, am I best practice in that area or this area? It's like seven yeah. category areas. And I think it's a very good starting point for a customer to just under, you know, get that kind of outside in view of how I'm doing, and then look at, hey, which is the area that would be best for me to optimize with the highest yeah. return, the highest ROI for me, um, and go after that, Yeah. right? So kind of do that outside-in assessment of your environment. Too many people have looked at their private cloud environment and let it kind of uh, sit and yeah. not innovate within that platform, and I think you know the cost benefit means you got to flip that on its head. You got to start innovating back on that private cloud again because the ROI is there. Yeah, and, and, and what you're saying, Paul, really jives well with the conversations we've had with Hoktan, where he's really you know focusing on the fact that maybe private can lead public and not public lead private. I mean, that is still where the majority of workloads lie, and you and I talk about that all yeah. the time. Where, but having said that, the trend line, the cranky teenager, has been sort of at the forefront of what most IT, enterprise IT teams have been thinking, build around cloud, and then of course hybridize. You're kind of, the whole theme of this event is like, maybe, flip to maybe it's time to think about this differently. Flip it on its head, but with a little bit of a twist. Uh, and a little bit of a twist is that uh, 
you can deploy, this is a private cloud platform that you can deploy into your data center, into hyperscaler data centers, so you can run it up on Google, on AWS, on Azure, on Oracle. Right. You can run it on our service providers, so our CSPs. Uh, we have more than 500 CSPs in, in right. our program. So you've got deployment choice. What you have is a common platform, common attributes. You've got easy migration services where you move applications without change, like overnight I can decide, hey, I just want to move it from this service to that service. Yeah. Uh, that's a big difference. So, so it's a private, private cloud is a platform and a software platform, and it gives you the agility and performance and, and, and management capability that you need. But deploying it, you can deploy it anywhere, which is, which is pretty powerful. And there it is. That's the big moment, the big aha for everybody here at VMware Explore 2024. Paul Turner, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you so much for being part of the 6.5. We are here on the road at VMware Explore 2024 in Las Vegas. Pat, we covered a lot of ground we and did. we will cover a lot more. So we hope you'll subscribe, stay tuned, be part of our community for the, all the analysis that Pat and I bring here on the show and of course all of our talent here on the 6.5. But we gotta go, we'll see you all soon, bye bye.